What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we're taking a look at the Global Lab updates for July 7th. I can tell you that uh, this one is rather large, that's what she said, uh, so if you want to use the timestamps looking for specific pieces, uh, those are uh, therefore, you'll feel free to jump in and use them. Before we dive in, I do want to talk just real quickly uh, about a sponsorship that we've got going on from Pearl Abyss for me. Uh, if you plan on purchasing any A coins, subsequently Pearls, and you are not a Steam user, um, if you uh, bring up the purchasing there, you will see a option to put in your content creator code. Mine is NTW, and if you enter that, I do get a commission from now until August 16th. Um, that PA is hooking me up with. So if you were going to buy the pearls anyways, maybe hook your boy up, throw the, co the code on in there, and I get a little cut instead of PA getting it. So uh, everybody wins. doesn't cost you anything. There's no discount or anything, but uh, just a little way to say, hey, man, thanks. And like I said, if you're already going to buy the pearls anyways, then like help me out, please type in the code. So, all right, with the uh, sellout mode out of the way, let's jump into the notes and take a look. First up, the, of course, T10 Doom, which is coming next week anyways, uh, is now live on the Global Lab servers for it. Alongside this uh, release, we do see the increase uh, amount for fail stacking. So you'll be able to fail stack with T10s now. The amount of what it increases on each fail wasn't known until now. It's 0.2%. Uh, which is not too shabby, and that's actually in line with T9 clicks. Um, so pretty sweet there. Uh, nice little bonus that we pick up on that. Five attempts failure will then mean you'll be up to 4% instead of 3%. So hopefully that increases you. Just talking averages, that's a difference before of roughly like 33 clicks when it's a flat 3%, give or take a little there. Uh, now it's about 18% with the fail stack. So that's like a significant increase. Uh, we also see that obtaining some of the items is going to become a little bit easier, and we get the details on what that is after hearing about it. Uh, at the uh, Heidel Ball. So uh, mythical fetters, feathers were added so that you can obtain them from the following world and field bosses. That's going to be Offentet. And then for field bosses, Black Shadow, Red Nose, Mudster, Dim Tree, uh, Giant, Giant Mudster, uh, Cowardly Beg, and Ketzvariak uh, as well. They all have a chance that we don't know what chance to drop them. You can also get them from the nighttime uh, Patrigio Secret Shop in there. Again, we don't necessarily know how often it comes up or what the price range on those is but considering you can't get them that way currently and now you can that's definitely good there's weekly quest at old wisdom tree the stable keeper varial has it uh, and the weekly for that used to be one feather it's now going to be two uh, and then you can choose one weekly uh, either the supporting Kirkdala source stone or carrot confit application the reward for that has been increased from one to two mythical feathers as well and we also see an increase on the weekly royal fern root um, which is just catch a wild horse you can get that from liana in any uh in any zone it says uh you get it from the stone uh stone tail hill horse ranch you can also get it liana anywhere but the reward for that was increased from 30 to 50 giving you enough fern roots just off the weeklies alone within two weeks uh whereas before you'd need three and some change obviously sprinkling some dailies in there we don't see an increase to the daily one for it uh other than that we got some improvements to uh the unicorn and pegasus up uh, um t10s as well it was uh, added so that you can run forward when you press the q when using the pegasus wings of freedom skill however the action can't be used when you are learning the skill wings of swiftness which is a skill born uh unique to that one and then for the dna or unicorn uh he consumes mm, not sure how we're going to pronounce that we're going to say ogre's breath so it's been improved to run 20 to 30 percent faster when running on water which is pretty sweet and then reduced the breath consumption uh, while running on the water by about 50%. So he should be able to zoom, zoom, zoom on water for a bit longer and faster. Uh, next up, we have changes to the archaeologist map. It is now going to have a separate cooldown from the regular travels map, traveler's map, which is really, really sweet. And that's uh, probably should have always been that way, but let's not harp on that. The fact that it is now is really sweet. That's um, almost going to be like a, a really want to pick up necessity, um, sort of like how the infinite pots have morphed from a nice to have to a must have. Uh, that map is huge convenience having that added bonus. We also have a function uh, that's a little interesting and enhanced together group enhancing. You can um, eff effectively get into a group and then everybody can choose to enhance and click theirs at the same time. It has to be the same level of it. It doesn't say specifically if the item is the same. What do I mean by that? Well, clicking a Tet Black Star to a Pen Black Star, uh, the, the gain there is quite a bit different than, say, 
a uh, tet zarka to a pen zarka. Um, it just notes specifically that it has to be a tet to pen, so maybe that would work for it. It doesn't increase the odds or anything. It's more so just like, hey, man, let's, I don't know, get drunk and click a bunch of silly stuff. And then your buddy's like, all right, cool, bro, let's do it. And then you can see each other's screen uh, at the same time that you do it. So pretty cool. I don't know if you have friends. I, I, I couldn't speak to that portion of it, but maybe that's a thing. Uh, that you want to do. Although, to be honest, if you have friends, you're probably not playing BDO. Uh, we have the Termian Beach opening, which they said they weren't going to do. So for two weeks, starting from July 12th, they're going to have that open and available. Um, they decided to change their mind after the hide all ball, thanks to a lot of requests. Uh, so they'll have some quests and things. There's not quests and things. There's not going to be a fishing event going on, but keep in mind that the season Coelacanth uh, one is still going on. You can literally be fishing in virtually any city and getting 500k Coelacanths uh, constantly from that one if you weren't aware already. So that's still going to be running. There won't be an additional one with the 1 million silver fish that we usually see. Uh, we have desert debuff improvements. Uh, effectively, you can go to an oasis uh, during the daytime and get a blessing that will prevent you from getting sunstroke. And then um, alternatively, at nighttime, you can go to the campfire at the oasis and that will prevent you from getting uh, hypothermia in the evening. Uh, guild home servers being introduced on the KR servers. I'll be honest with you, I didn't know that they didn't have that already, but there you go. Uh, we've got Village Old Moon Furniture Shop being added to Land of the Morning Light uh, Zone Dalbiel. Dalbiel. Uh, so that just seems to every week to get added to another city. So I'm not I'm not really surprised to continue to see that. We've a battle arena drill instructor that's been added. So six additional instructors have started to pra uh, help practice their skills at the battle arena. And with the addition of the drill instructors to the battle arena, the area of the battle arena has been expanded and the dilapidated house has been cleared. So they've effectively opened it up a little more area uh, for you there. Some Abyss 1 Magnus improvements. Um, they were some issue fixes in general and then making just a couple of quests a little bit easier as far as reducing the difficulty level end of tomorrow and the pendulum is ticking if you're still struggling through um magnus quest line i am so sorry for you we have monster improvements we see on all of the grind zones for the infinite hp and mp pots uh so the monsters are going to respawn twice as fast which is actually a significant improvement especially for some of the ones where you're just targeting specific mobs like uh shira ruins or maybe even mansions uh, but all of those zones shira ruins shira con necropolis during the daytime uh, Blood Wolves, uh, Navern Step, Forest Runneros, and Mansion Forest will all now respawn in uh, twice as fast as they previously did. See a little tweak to Olin's Valley. Uh, when the Colossus is defeated, the minion summoned by him uh, has been improved so it doesn't disappear. And that applies to Colossus Rock and the Indomitable Colossus as well. Uh, we have a tweak to Guild Bus subjug Subjugation that the loot, uh, the advice of Valks that can be obtained when subjugating them has been changed. Um, you can now get a 50 stack. Uh, that is added. The drop rate for 40 and 30 has been increased. And when you're acquiring the 30, you can get uh, one or two instead of just one now, as it was previously. We have inventory improvements and then newbies inventory. I'll read the dev note on this one. The newbie inventory was showcased a little bit at the Heidel Ball, and they've actually already changed it before the final iteration. It's been added for new adventurers, and this bag can be used by any adventurer, and there's no separate weight limit. In particular, new adventurers must be unfamiliar with various support items, so I hope you put all those items in your newbie bag and use them while getting to know them step by step. However, some items such as monster hunting loot, including junk, pearl bag items, etc., can't be used in that bag. Along with this uh, inventory, including normal pearl and family, UI category sorting has been added. You can now sort each item by type, so we hope you make good use of it. Also, adventurers are hearing more feedback about inventory, and among them, there were a lot of comments about the inconvenience of combined items, and we're looking for ways to com uh, use combination items without that inconvenience, and going to try and come up with a solution, even if it takes a little bit longer. So they're aware of it, they're looking at at it trying to work on it um it was originally showcased that the newbie bag was gonna have 30 slots it's actually gonna be 50 slots as it looks like that's how it is on the global labs at this time so uh that is likely going to be the iteration that goes to the live servers and they kind of show a little graphic with the organizing function there which is very nice and way overdue i'll be honest the inventory thing it's probably just because i've played for so long and i'm used to it uh didn't bother me but when you see things like that, this then then you look back you're like man this was a mess <laughs> you know so yeah you also have a find my item function that can be used outside of just like clicking on like individual town storages on it to make that uh, a little smoother a little easier for you uh, and then we have some class changes for this week as well, and there are several and somewhat significant. Uh, first of all, the social action Yangban Wari, which I believe is the sitting down, uh, was added, but it was disappointing that female characters weren't available to have it. 
Um, they added that female character specific motion so that you can use that social action. They sit down prim and proper like a lady. Uh, so their lady bits aren't flopping out, uh, in Indian style there. So if you're looking forward to it, sorry, then we have, uh, some ninja changes that are interesting. So we've got a note on this ninja awakening along with the newly changed Sora Ranmu skill, uh, allow you to use buff and debuff effects smoothly when continuing the combo. Awakening ninjas have high utilization of their main weapon skills, so they had to use awakening skills in the skill slots to switch to the Sura state. Uh, we changed the murderous intent skill to activate from the main weapon when ankle slash is locked so that the combo can be continuous continued with the curled troll keys. However, when learning the skill Bone Gleaming Flesh, the super armor and stiffness effect every three seconds is too strong. So instead of increasing the cooldown, we've increased the specialization and defense reduction effects. In addition, the buffs of the Terrible Dragon Rise skills where it was difficult to utilize all the evasion rate reduction effects and the critical uh, rate in increase effect obtained when using the skill was somewhat disappointing as the critical rate was already applied to the skill itself at 100%. It's been improved to move the uh, debuff effect so that you can use the buff and debuff effect more smoothly while linking skills. You get a little graphic update there for the uh, Chaos Spree, and they actually use the Black Spirit Rage version uh, of it. And next up, we have similarly there some Kuno changes as well. Uh, we've got a change for Flow Wrath, and it's been changed as follows. Uh, skill name has been changed, first of all, to Circle Dance. Um, that may be the live translation we see, but maybe not because sometimes they tweak those things. Um, where you perform another attack with the Shadow Alter Ego. Uh, the behavior of the skill has been changed, and the damage has been adjusted accordingly, and the skills that can be linked have been changed. It's float on successful hit for PvE, and down smash effects have been removed, and it's been improved so that you can register it and use it in the skill slot, and then they show a little graphic of it there. So there's that. Moonstorm has a now has a down smash effect added to it, and uh, the effect decreasing all defense by 20 for 10 seconds... Uh, on that skill has been moved to the skill uh, Sospri of Sonin, so it no longer has it. Uh, Lunar Dash, we see the increase all AP for 10 by 10 for 10 seconds is changed to increase all evasion rates by 9% for 10 seconds. That is significant. Halo increases all evasion rate for 10 seconds when using the Halo skill plus 9% uh, is now the an AP plus 20 for 10 seconds, so a little bit of a swap out. Uh, on those two, we've got Chain Crash Saw Chakram getting a stamina reduction, uh, stamina consumption of 200 being reduced down to a mana consumption of 120 and has a recovery effect of 10 mana for each successful hit on it that has now been removed. Then we see uh, some damage increases PVE only because the damage reduction in PVP was uh, ideally adjusted to then balance out to the same but pve damage increases on sospri of sonin flow chakram rise moonstorm wheel of wrath flow indignation and chain crash saw chakram uh next up we have nova and particularly nova succession i honestly thought they gave up on this but they didn't so uh it actually has a pretty massive change in nova succession uh when you'd summon axion you would exchange your life force uh through several of the skills and that uh had a considerable amount of life consumed each time that axion was summoned and even though there's a health recovery effect on successful hits while summoning them it's difficult to utilize the effect in pvp situations which was somewhat burdensome the cost of summoning axion has been changed from life force to mp removing the burden of life force when using the skill in addition, in order to improve PvE in a way that brings out the characteristic of Nova's succession, fighting al alongside the Royal Guard in Axion, we've increased the effect of increasing the critical hate hit rate when using Facing Darkness and Kiss of the Ice. In addition, in the case of Raging Morning Star, which had low damage and was difficult to use compared to its long motion, the motion was changed and the Strong Raging Star skill was added to increase its usability. So, obviously, switching to MP instead of a big chunk of your HP is extremely massive increase uh, for Succession Nova. These PvE changes, on the other hand, uh, although in the right spirit, I don't think um, that this is enough for that spec on that class to uh, be competitive with other in PvE. But then again, it's not all about competition. If you like playing it, definitely go for it. The new skills at least look pretty cool. Um, so can't take that away from him and now the last one and probably most anticipated uh because it's somewhat the newest here we have changes to megu and we see this for both succession and awakening tweaks we kind of anticipated awakening since it's brand new succession still uh having some things changed here so 
In this case, the damage, number of hits, attack range, and some of the effects of the following skill have been changed. Just to note that the total damage that it's dealing is not changed. It's just that the number of hits has been altered. So, for example, uh, we see this with Fox Spirit Tag. So, what they're talking about, it's 1184% times 9, and now it is 2131% times 5. So, they're reducing the overall number of hits, but increasing the amount, and the statement is that that will overall deal the same amount of damage. Uh, the absolute Fox Spirit tag has the uh, has a reduced attack range. We see the uh, same number of hit damage uh, change on Prime Baird Claws as well as the all evasion rates or the uh, evasion shred that's on it. The 9% uh, is removed and it's now going to be an increased accuracy by 9% for 5 seconds when using it. That's pretty big uh, in my opinion. Damage tweak again on Petal Play and Fox Flare. For Flower Shroud we see a note that in PvP damage reduced by 5% when hitting two or more people, so a split damage effect, that's actually getting removed now. So we no longer have that. Uh, also, the Flower Shroud Absolute uh, has that same impact. We see the damage tweak happening on Bristling Sparks. Uh, and then we have the increased accuracy on, on Spirited Away completely removed. So your Evasion Shred skill becomes your increased accuracy. Your increased accuracy skill is gone, reducing her overall uh, hit rate by 9%, or at least functionally what you can achieve with that uh the prime heavenward dance has the uh dp or excuse me ap debuff on it being removed it will no longer have that and then the attack range was adjusted on the absolute uh heavenward dance and the nuke dory dance in prime and now for awakening uh this one it's a little tough to fully understand the impacts here because of um how the skills read if you've logged into the game at all but functionally what's happening is that uh, the if you notice now some of the skills used in a certain combination will remove the crit damage buff and they're adjusting what skills do that um, and how that's actually changing so that you don't see that as often there are still going to be instances like for instance using your iframe spirit step or chain spirit step uh, is going to dispel your crit buff that is still happening so where the change is the effect of increasing critical hit rate damage that was applied in the above situations is maintained for the duration um, so now if you use when the spirit step or chain spirit step uh, when you're transitioning to command post not 100 percent what uh, what that that's supposed to mean and when using a skill with the spirits dispelled assuming that's things like if you go from a shift rmb into an a or d rmb it it removes your your um crit damage if you also do two a or d rmbs in a row it'll remove the crit damage but if you do a d rmb then an rmb and then another d rmb it doesn't uh it looks like we're getting a, this is being changed so that you'll maintain it anytime you use a skill that would normally break the chain and dispel it it keeps the same amount that it would and then if you have another skill that would reapply it is then reapplied they did change the control key for semester skip to shift e and that skill and the shift e is now being changed to e which is currently a heal so i assume they didn't know to here i assume the heal is going to be a quick slot skill which kind of makes sense actually if they wanted to open up a um, little more flexibility there uh, they have some improved activation on twirling fox flare when holding down the f key after fox flare ambush uh, it was improved so that following skills can be linked immediately after using twirling fox flare and that spirit step chain spirit step or twirling rhapsody so ideally with the above change you could do something like ambush twirling fox flare twirling rhapsody seamlessly not exactly sure what it looks like chaining those together uh, and then the Fox Flare Fletch uh, had the crit damage buff changed from first level to second level, uh, which is obviously very welcome because more damage in a single skill. So there you have it uh, for this week's Global Lab updates. Most of these, we're going to see some of these live on next Wednesday, like the horse update. Uh, the class changes typically will go up um, to in two weeks. So not this coming Wednesday, but a week from that. That's not always the case. We have seen them go earlier. We've seen them go later. It's never a guarantee with these Global Lab updates. I can just tell you with 100% certainty, the T10 uh, Doom and all the other um, T10 changes are hitting the live servers this Wednesday. So that one's a guarantee. So there you have it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos go live. And if you'd like to catch me playing live, there's a link to my Twitch page in the description down below. Jump on over there, drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well. With that said, that's going to be it for this one. I want to thank everybody for watching and I will see you next time. Baby.